Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Islamic Pulse talk show. We are talking about how the era of the occultation of the 12th divinely appointed Imam is a golden era. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to the Islamic Pulse talk show. We are talking about how the era of the occultation of the 12th divinely appointed Imam, Imam al Mahdi, may Allah hasten his reappearance, is the age of a golden era. In order to talk a little bit about it, uh, we decided to humbly invite Sheikh Hani Raza. So we invite him and start the talk show. Uh, Sheikh Hani, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, so it's an honor to have you uh, on the Islamic Pulse talk show. Um, inshallah, I think we wanted to talk a little bit about how the era of the 12th Imam, may Allah hasten his reappearance, is this golden era. Um, you know, sometimes there's misconceptions out there about the occultation. Um, there's also various different interpretations or understandings. Um, so along those lines, we wanted to invite you. And, you know, we were discussing before the, the talk show how um, there are these kind of misunderstandings when it comes to the occultation. So uh, we hand it over to you in the name of Allah. InshaAllah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma kulli waliyyika al-hujjat ibn al-Hassan salawatuka alayhi wa ala abai. Fi hadhihi al-sa'ati wa fi kulli sa'a. Waliyan wa hafizan wa qa'idan wa nasiran wa dalilan wa ayna. Hatta tuskinahu arvaka taw'a wa tumattirahu fiha tawila. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ahli Muhammad. First of all, thank you so much for inviting me and I would like to say Salaamu Alaikum to all the viewers uh, for whom Allah has destined to watch and listen to this video and this inshallah. program inshallah. Mm. Uh, see the concept of Gaybat or the concept of occultation of Imam Mahdi is such an important topic that the ulama, the scholars of religion, especially in the school of thought of Tashayyu, they believe that this is the most basic, mm. or if I would like to say it like this, this is the alif of religion. Mm. Even though he is mm. Imam Mahdi salam, is the twelfth Imam, this doesn't mean that this does not mean that you know this is a secondary topic, and you know, mm. but no, this topic is such import in an importance way that it directly relates to the prophets to mm. the one lakh twenty four thousand prophets and to the imams to the ahlul bayt mm. mm. yes you mm. can't understand the qasas ul anbiya without mm. understanding imam mahdi salam mm. the stories of the anbiya the yes allama taba tabai rahmatullah alayhi he says there are more than 2,200 ayats and verses mm. related to the Qasas al-Anbiya. Mm, mashallah. Mm. And in one of the narrations by Imam Sadiq salam, he says, all these Qasas and stories mm. are for Imam Mahdi salam. Subhanallah. Are mm. for the Ma'rifat of Imam Mahdi salam. Mm. Subhanallah. Yani, mm. he says that if you want to understand the wujud and the existence of Imam Mahdi salam, mm. you need to start from the holy from the stories of the anbiya mm, mm. from the holy quran mm. more than 2200 verses one third yeah, of I mean, the holy quran yeah, it's not a yeah. joke mm. why is allah narrating stories mm, mm. so mm. this alif of the religion this is the mm. alif mm. Mm. Yani from through anbiya we need to go and delve in the, into the wujud of Imam Zamana alayhi salam. Mm. That's the real goal of mm. these stories. Mm. Yes. Because there's a hadith that Imam Zamana alayhi salam, in his wujud, he mm. has all the sunan of Anbiya. Mm. When he mm. will come, inshallah, when he appears, he will manifest the sunnat of Hazrat mm. Musa alayhi salam. Mm. Prophet Moses. Yes, yes mm. he will manifest the um, the sunnah, the mm. sunnah and the mawaris mm. and the inheritance of Hazrat Isa mm. salam. Mm. Of all the prophets, mm. he has in his wujud, in his existence, mm. all the uloom of Anbiya alayhi mm. So, when we read or when we 
you know, ponder on, on one of the stories of the holy prophets of, from these 124,000. From those stories, we need to, you know, shift from that story to Imam Zaman alayhi salam. Mm. Where is mm. that message hidden in this story, which yeah. is related to Imam Mahdi alayhi salam? Yeah, that connection. Between that connection. Three. We need to find that connection. Mm. Mm. So, now the thing is, you, you, you are asking about the concept of Gaibat or the concept of occultation of right. Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. See, uh, before I deep dive into that concept from the ayat and riwayat and ahadith, I just want to make one point over here. Sure, yeah. One of our basic problems in studying religion, not only the students, but also the uh, mm. those people who are not, you know, in the hausa, not mm -hmm. in the madrasa. Because, you know, alhamdulillah, in today's times, because of the events of Akhir Zaman, now there are many people who are trying to research mm. into sure. religion, especially sure. into the maktab of tashayyo. Right, right. But there's a, you know, uh, mishap or if I would say there's some incompleteness when we try to research. Mm, mm. What is that? We don't research. When we research, we research on the Holy Quran and the verses we ponder. But we don't, you know, um, deep dive into the ahadith. Mm, mm. For example, we have usul e kafi right? Sure, yeah. In usul e kafi which is one of the main books of Qutub e Arba, the first sure, one yeah. of those, yeah. you have 16,000 ahadith. Mm. Okay? Mm. 16,000. 16,000 mm. ahadith. Yeah, compilation of Shaykh Then Kulayi. you have one of those Jawami Rivai which is called Biharul mm. Anwar. Yes. 110, 110 volumes. Mm. <laughs> now in Bihar, so, uh, yeah. there's a whole bab on Ghaibat, or occultation of Imam mm. Zaman mm. Mm. The same goes for Al Kafi and other books. Mm. Mm. In one of the ahadith of Al Kafi and also in Bihar also, there's a concept which we, you know, when we read those ahadith, the concept which Imam Sadiq salam and Imam Baqir salam wanted to focus uh, was on the concept of imamat. Mm. Sure. Because imamat, the concept of imat, imamat was deviated after the death of the Holy Prophet. Yes, yeah. Okay, it faced that deviation. Because of which, at the time of Imam Bakir and Imam Sadiq salam, that this is a whole long topic. Mm, we need mm. like a number of sessions. That mm. what were those strategies of Imam Bakir salam mm. and Imam Sadiq salam uh, in uh, promoting and preaching the concept of Imam? They mm. had a specific and defined strategy sure. to promote sure. and to preach the concept of Imam. In those, in that concept if, of Imama, there's a subtopic called Mahdaviyat, mm. and in Mahdaviyat, there's a subtopic called the Gaibad of Imam Mahdi. Mm. Mm. Now, if you read Bihar, if you read Al Kafi and other uh, books of Ahadith in Maktab e Tashayyo, you'll find a number of Ahadith mm. Mm. focusing on the Gaibad of Imam. Mm. Interesting. There's yeah. a question, right? Why Imam? Now, Imam Bakir salam, is physically present. Mm, sure, so yeah, why is he yeah. focusing on Gaibat now? Right. There's a hadith, th there's a story now of Imam Bakir salam. Just imagine. I'll just, you know, shorten this and uh, we'll try to move on to the real topic. Now, this is a muqaddma for that real topic yeah, sure, which you yeah, asked. Yeah. Imam Bakir salam, he, along with his companion Abu Basir, mm. he goes to the masjid in Medina and he doesn't enter the masjid mm, he's mm. just outside the masjid and the people you know are coming out mm. they are free from the prayers and everyone is coming out one by one Imam Bakr he tells to Abu Basir oh Abu Basir go and ask all these people or any one of them yeah what do I ask ask them can you see Bakr mm. Abu Basir was you know shocked why Everyone mm. can see you. Everyone can see you. No, you go and ask. Mm. So Abu Basir, he, you know, he just catches one person and says, "Can you see Imam Bakir?" Mm. Uh, he says, uh, "No, I can't see Imam Bakir. Where is he? Mm. He's not here." Yeah, strange. Abu mm. Basir was shocked. <laughs> okay, mm. he comes to because Imam, ba Imam Bakir was right in front of the individuals. He that was they were right asking. in front in mm. the public. 
Abu Basir comes to Imam and he says, he you know, narrates the story, no, he can't see mm -hmm. you. There's a person coming out of the masjid, his name is Abu Harun al makfuf mm -hmm. He was, he could not see. He mm -hmm. was blind. And he was an old mm -hmm. person. He was like 80, 90 years old. Mm -hmm. Imam Bakr says, Abu Basir, now go ask Abu Harun al makfuf the same question. Mm -hmm. Can you see Imam Bakr? Yes. Yeah. So he goes and asks, can you see Imam Bakr? Abu Harun al makfuf says, mm -hmm. What question are you asking me? Mm. You can't <laughs> see this noor mm. spread over the universe. Yeah. The only thing I can see is Imam Bakr. Is Imam Bakr alayhi salam. Mm. So Imam Bakr alayhi salam over here mm. is trying to, you know, contemplate. He's trying to define for Abu Basir the concept mm. of Gaibat of mm. Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Mm. Very interesting. Mm. Okay, now this is one story. Now I need mm. to delve into that concept which you were asking sure, in your sure. question. So the first point was that there is a, you know, um, ultimate absolute focus of the Imams through their ahadith on the concept of Gaibat. Mm. Now mm. I will narrate to you two to three riwayat. Sure, yeah, and yeah, yeah. because we want to, you know, because the riwayat and ahadith um, our Ustad, he says that these ahadiths, in fact, mm. when you read, you just don't think that this is, these are just words and sentences. Mm. No. Mm. These ahadiths are mm. the kalam of Imam. Mm. Yeah, it changes now, your perspective. Since the wujud of Imam is nur, mm. this kalam is also nur. Yeah. You, with these ahadiths, when you read, you are being connected with the nuraniyat mm. of Imam Sadiq, of Imam mm. Bakr, mm. mm. alayhi, alayhi as, as with the Quran, you are connected with yes. Allah Yes, mm. yes, the same concept. Now, mm. there's a hadith in Kamaluddin wa Tamamun Ni'mah mm. of Sheikh Saduq, rahmatullahi This hadith is from the Holy Prophet, sallallahu mm. alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this is Jabir ibn Abdullah Ansari mm. narrating. Jabir, he asks the Holy Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, walil qa'imi min wuldika ghaiba, does the qa'im, which is from your progeny, mm, your progeny, yeah. does he has ghaibat, mm. occultation? Now here the Holy Prophet says, E wa Rabbi, yes he has mm. that occultation. Mm. Now I'm skipping some of the parts and I want to focus on this sentence. He says, Ya Jabir, in hadha al-amr, Amrum min amrillah. This amr of mm. the gaybat of Imam Zaman sure. is from the amr of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Now, there's a question over here. Why is the Holy Prophet calling mm. the gaybat or naming the gaybat of Imam mm. Zaman mm. as the amr of Allah? Mm. Now, inshallah, that I will answer to mm. the next ahadith. Then he says the Holy Prophet was sirrum min sirrillah. Mm. The it occultation is a secret, is mm. a secret of Allah. Mm. Allah has many secrets. This is mm. one of those secrets. SubhanAllah. Yeah. Now, in order to elaborate this secret and this Amr, let's ask Imam Sadiq over mm. here. Mm. As I said, there are a number of ahadiths mm. defining gay, but elaborating this concept. Imam Sadiq says, In lisahi bihad al Amr, Ghaybatun, mm. verily this Imam, he has a ghaybat, mm. la buddha minha. Mm. What do you mean by la buddha min? This has to occur. Mm. Mm. Ghaybat has to occur. Yeah. You don't have any choice. Yeah. It mm. has to occur. Mm. Then he says, Inna hadha al-amr, amrum min amrillahi ta'ala, وَسِرُّ مِنْ سِرِّ اللَّهِ وَغَيْبٌ مِنْ غَيْبِ اللَّهِ Gaybat, occultation, mm, is mm. from the gaib of Allah. Mm. The unseen of Allah. The... Now what do you mean by gaib of Allah over mm. here? Mm. On the other side, the Holy Prophet says this is the Amr of Allah. There's an ayat mm. of the, in the Holy Quran, Allah, لَهُ الْخَلْقُ amr. You have one khalq, which is this physical system. Sure, yeah. The bodily nizam and system of this world. Mm. There's one more system. Mm. There's one more realm, mm. which is the alam amr. Mm. 
mm. which you cannot see with your eyes. True. Yeah. In other terms, there's one more ayat, Alamul, Alamul Ghaybi wa Shahada. Alamu Shahada is this Alam al Khalq, this mm. physical reality. Mm. Mm. And Alam al Ghayb is this unseen world. The unseen world, yeah. Okay. Now, Imam is saying, Amrum min Amrillah. Amr in this hadith mm. is mm. that same unseen mm. world. He's, he's saying that, you know, this Ghaybat of Imam is Amana is not from, is, its reality is not from this physical world. Sure. It's connected with that unseen, unseen world. world. Yeah, the yeah. unseen universe, which is called Alamul Ghaib. Alam mm. Yes. Now, over here, Imam says, La Buddha Minha, this has mm. to happen. Why? Let's ask another hadith, okay? From Sadir Sayyidafi. And he asked Imam, Imam Jafar Sadiq alayhi salam. Over here, Imam alayhi salam, he mm. opens that secret. Mm. That's several the, One dimension of that philosophy, I would mm. say, in this way, okay? He says, Antajriya, this gaybat, Antajriya fihi sunanul anbiya alayhim salam fi ghayabatihim wa innahu la buddha lahu. The gaybat and occultation mm. of Imam Mahdi alayhi salam is in fact the same sunnah mm. of Allah mm. which was, if I would say, uh, if I had that correct term, mm. which Allah implemented in the mm. lives of the Anbiya alayhi right. salam. Right. Now, if you go to and research, read the book of Kamaluddin wa Tamam wa Naima, just mm. see the index. Mm. There's a chapter in Kamaluddin, Babu Ghayabat al Anbiya. Mm. Interesting. The chapter yeah. of the Ghayabat of Ambiya, occultations of Ambiya. Mm. Then in those uh, chapters, you have the Ghaybat of Hazrat Idris, mm. Ghaybat of Hazrat Nu, alayhi salam, Hazrat Saleh, Hazrat Ibrahim, Hazrat Yusuf, Hazrat Musa, Hazrat Isa, and until mm. the end. Mm. All mm. these Ambiya were in Ghaybat in mm. some, in any time. At, yeah, at one in point. Any, in some time. occasion, at some, some point mm. of mm. their lives. <laughs> There's a hadith that, you know, Hazrat Musa alayhi yeah. salam, he went to occultation for three to four times. Mm, mm. Between Hazrat Adam alayhi salam and Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, mm. there was a period of 1,500 years. Mm. Okay? Mm. The, the Janashin and mm. the representative and the wasi mm. of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam was Hazrat Shais alayhi salam. Mm. Right. Now, from the time of Hazrat Shais alayhi salam, be, before the time, before the zuhur of mm. Hazrat Nuh alayhi salam, there were around, in these 1500 mm. years, there were around 14 to 10 Ambiya. Mm. 10 prophets, they were, you know, sent by the Almighty mm. sure, for the yeah. hidayat and guidance of the people. Mm. There's a rewind that says these 10 or 12 Ambiya, mm. they were in hiding. Mm. They were in gaybat. In occultation. They right. are called mm. Ambiya and Mustaqfeen. Mm. They were hidden, always in occultation. Mm, hidden including Shays mm. alayhi salam. Mm. Mm. So with this so This hadith, is a, a sunnah of Allah. Now, over is here Imam alayhi salam is using, using the word sunnah. Mm. This is mm. a sunnah of Ambiya. All the Ambiya which will be Im implemented in the life of Imam Zamana alayhi salam. Mm. And this is La Buddha Law. This has mm. to happen. Mm. Mm. So gay birth has mm. to happen, mm. no matter what. Sure. <laughs> now what do we mean by no matter what? Mm. If Imam Ali alayhi salam, he had, you know, the event of Saqifah and all mm. these were, you know, mm. they had not occurred, for example. Mm. Imam Ali alayhi salam would have governed for like mm. 200 years. Mm. And then he would, you know, pass you know, pass this hukumat and mm. governance to Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Sure, yeah. All the Imams from Imam Ali until Imam Has Hassan Askari alayhi salam, they would have governed mm. the people for like 1,000 years. Mm. They would not have been oppressed by the people. Just mm. imagine this. Sure. Mm. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, mm. then again, mm. Imam Zaman alayhi salam has to go into occultation. Mm. <laughs> he sure. has to mm. go into occultation. Why? Mm. Because this, this is the sunnah of yeah. 
the holy of Allah implemented mm. into the lives of the Anbiya mm. and it's mm. a sunnah ila yawm al qiyamah mm. and it's a amrullah and a sirrullah as well yes mm. and a sir now what is mm. this sunnah why mm. why khuda why Allah mm. we need to ask why what is the philosophy of this yeah sunnah? what's the purpose inshallah we'll talk about this inshallah mm. in the mm. later sessions or in mm. this session if we are able to mm. now there's a you know um, hadith in which uh, you know, the Imam alayhi salam, you know, because we have so many ziyarat, namas and all these uh, yes, we yes. recite on, a, you know, on some a few occasions. In one of those uh, texts and mutun, we say like this. Mm. We have been told by the Imams to say this, these sentences. Mm. Amantu bisirri. Mm. I believe. Mm. Okay. Mm. I bring faith. Mm. On this secret, yes, the sir. Okay, mm. on this sir, mm. Mm. and the truthfulness and the truthfulness of, of this ghaybat. Of your ghaybat. Mm. Now, if you have any questions over, you can ask me. You can mm. interrupt me. No, I don't no, have I'm, any I'm issues. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm waiting for that. the opportune time to interrupt. <laughs> okay, inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> mm. So, mm. now with this in mind. I would like to quote one more hadith, mm. if you allow me, inshallah. Mm, sure. Qala Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. In this hadith, which is a very long hadith, mm. I will just quote two or three bits from this. Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he expresses his shock, mm. his ishtiyaq, mm. his, his, you know, yearning, his desire yearning. and desire, yeah. eagerness to meet those people living in the time of Ghaibat. Mm, sure, yeah. So now see this, uh, you know, see the... And it's like you said, these aren't just mere words. Um, this it, is, these it, are not complementary, you know, uh, you yeah, know sentences yeah. over here. Formality or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Else. No, these are the haqaiq mm. of, of the alim et taqween mm. of this universe. These realities and these yes, truths. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Nabi Akram, he says, the Holy Prophet, Ah, mm. I want to meet my brothers. I'm eager mm. to meet my brothers who will come after me. Mm. Now, when he says this, Fakala Abu Zar, Abu Zar mm. said, Ya Rasulullah, Alasna Ikhwanak, are mm. we not your brothers? Mm. La, antum ashabi. No, you are mm. not my brother, you are only mm. my companions. Mm. So where are my brothers? Wa ikhwani yaji'una min ba'di sha'nuhum sha'nul anbiya. Now over here, Nabi the mm, Holy Prophet, mm. he defines the qualities of my brothers who will mm. come in the time of Gebat. Then after a few sentences, he says, ha ah, shawqan ilayhim. Mm, mm. He, because you said the, that part of the tradition, he said uh, that um, my brothers are those that have the characteristics or the qualities of the Anbiya. Anbiya. Sha'nuhum sha'nul Anbiya. Sha yes, yes, yes. The honor yes. and the esteem. They are the manifestation mm. of some of the qualities of Anbiya. Mm. My brothers who will come in Akhirul Zaman. Mm. Mm. Okay? It's the Ummat in Akhirul Zaman. In Farsi, they say Khili Harfi. Khili Harfi. It's a, it's a very profound thing. So, this yeah. is something different over which is mm. being defined in the Ahadith about Qaybat. Mm. Mm. Compared to that which we have in our minds now. Mm, mm. Now, then again, Nabi Akram sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ya Abu Zar, O Abu Zar, Inni ilayhim la mushtaqun. Mm. I'm eager to meet them. Thumma ghamma dha'aynayhi wa baka shawqa. Mm. Then he wiped his eyes mm, and, he, and he started to cry mm. and cry and cry. Mm. Mm. Out of this desire. Then he prays, then he prays mm. for those who are in Akhir Zaman. Allahumma. Allahum mahfadhum, one surhum ala man khalafa alayhim and ala inna awliya Allah la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. May Allah help them and may Allah support yes. them, protect them mm, from those that are their, their enemies. So this is. Can, do you have the tradition where it talks a little bit about the, um, the qualities of these brothers or companions? There are many. It, if there are many hadiths over here. There are many ha hadiths. This hadith itself, you know, is talking about the qualities yeah. of the companions. Of uh, see, because uh, before we move into the qualities yeah, of sure. those people living in the gaybat, mm. let's first understand the quality of gaybat. Mm. The time of gaybat mm. is it mm. a punishment? 
as as some people say, you know, it's a yeah. musibah, it's a punishment. Or a, is it a reward? Yeah, this is a disaster. Or as the topic says, it is a golden era. Mm. As a golden era. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that's what we need to see from the hadith, and then we can move on from that mm. to the qualities of the companions mm. of Imam Zamana mm. alayhi salam living in this time. Mm. Because 2024, this is the time of Gambit, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Nabiya yeah. Akram, the Holy Prophet, is talking about this mm. time. Mm. Okay. So over here, there's one more hadith which talks about the time of Gaibat. What mm. is what is this, this occultation period like? Mm. Now, I would like everyone to pay attention to this because this mm. is, you know, something different over here, mm. which is being defined. An Mufan al Mufazal ibn Umar, an Abi Abdullah Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, mm. أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعِبَادُ مِنَ اللَّهِ جَلَّ الذِّكْرُ That time mm. in which the bandagan, mm. the people, mm. the servants of Allah, the followers of the religion of Islam, will be, they will be the most nearness, near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Subhanallah. What is that time? Mm. Second, وَأَرْضَ مَا يَكُونُ عَنْهُمْ And they are always, you know, uh, they always accept eat anything which happens to them in their lives. Mm. Any bala which occurs for mm. them. Mm. Any ni'mat which, with which they are blessed with. This, they are always, you know, they have this contentment. Contentment or, all the time. Uh, this uh, rida. So the most, that time which the people have the most contentment. Mm. Mm. And mm. that time in which the people are the most near to Allah. When is that time? Mm. Imam says, is a ftaqadu hujjat Allahi azza wa jal. When their hujjat mm. is disappeared from their eyes. Mm. Okay? Walam yadhar lahum. He's mm. not in front of them. Walam ya'lamu makana. Mm. The people don't, don't know, know where, where his location is. is. Mm. وَهُمْ فِي ذَٰلِكَ يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّهُ لَمْ تَبْتُ الْحُجَّةُ اللَّهِ And they know mm. that the hujjat of Allah is there. He's mm. living. It's not that He will, you know, according, for example, to the, the Akai of the brothers of Ahlul yeah. He will, you know, be you know, born. Yes, come mm. afterwards. No, it's not like that. فَعِنْدَهَا فَتَوَكَّءُ الْفَرَجْ سَبَاحًا وَمَسَا This is that time, the gaybat, in which mm. the faraj will appear and occur for the people. Sabahan wa masa, day and night. Fa'inna ashadda ma yakunu ghadabu Allah ala a'adaihi iza ftaqadu hujjada. That time in which, in that period in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows his, you know, ghazab, shows his punishment for the, you know, for his enemies, is a ftaqadu hujjata when the hujjat of Allah mm. is disappeared. Mm. That is the most severe mm. time of punishment for the enemies of mm. Allah. Mm. Mm. You know, I mean, it just it just seems opposite to what you would, um, I mean, what you would think, right? So, uh, the common understanding is really baraks. I don't know if we, if you want to kind of take a break um, and and discuss this a little bit. You know, this idea that. Normally, we think that this time of occultation, like you said, you know, is a punishment, it is a problem, um, it is uh, for the believers, and it is a moment of respite for the enemies of Allah. But here, we are starting to understand the opposite, that no, this is mm. severe for the enemies of Allah, and um, it, is, it is a golden opportunity for, for, the, believers. for the believers. Yeah. What I'm trying, what I'm understanding from your point, if I want to just, you know, summarize sure, in one sure. sentence, is that all, the, uh, all these ahadiths mm. should have been, you know, for zuhur. Mm. Mm. After the imam appears, not mm. before the imam appears. Mm. That's mm. a question, right? Why is this the opposite? See, that's the problem. That's, we need to understand, first of all, the concept of, since we, our concept of mm. insan, Sure, is yeah. incomplete. We don't know who we are, mm. what is our spiritual history, mm -hmm. and where we need to go, and where we have been sent to. Mm. 
since this concept is incomplete that is why we are not able to that was there's something the upside down in our minds mm. about the guy about the famous mm. Muhammad mm. alayhi mm. we think mm. we think that this physical world is the reality mm. sure especially because of you know of the last 20 30 years because of the, you know uh, occurrence of technolo- technology mm. yeah, and yeah, the technological yeah. development and our habituation towards technology which results into our mind being materialized yeah, sure, okay yeah. we have been habituated with the system of physicality mm-hmm. and unser- uh, unconsciously we are thinking this is the real world mm-hmm. let me give an example 50 mm. years ago mm. when there was no mobile phones and you know even mm. a landline phone would have been difficult for a family to you know mm. afford for example yeah yeah just imagine and we have seen what i'm what the the example which i'm giving we have seen this the, this example in like you know those movies which you know used to be produced in like 30 years ago mm. there's a mother her son he wants to study you know for example that mother is living in pakistan and his her son decides to study abroad mm. like in america or any any other part of the world mm. france uk yeah okay so definitely not india huh <laughs> no anywhere okay <laughs> i'm just kidding anywhere, yeah anywhere mm. so now this son okay now separation of the mother from the son is not an easy thing sure yeah. a mother cannot separate herself from a her son it's not mm. easy mm. so when this son he goes okay like for two years three years in that two three years period of studying over there abroad his son he gets an accident he faces an accident and he gets mm. you know injured and he's in the hospital mm. this mother now there is no telephone or social media whatsapp or something yeah, yeah, sure, to yeah. report to this mother that your son is in the hospital yeah but this mother knows mm. there's some problem with my son mm. Yeah, she senses it. She yeah. senses something. Mm. No one has told her, right? Mm. How is she sensing? Mm. This sensing is mm. that low level of alam gaib. Mm. Because sure. this yeah. mother yeah. is not habitual, you know, with materialistic things and technology. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. she's not so, you know, habitual with that. That is why she is a bit connected with mm. that. Mm. realm of the gaib mm. of the mm. unseen mm. but you know the mothers of today they don't mm. sense anything right they don't sense mm. anything yeah the unless you know their mobile phone doesn't ring yeah read. the the mothers and fathers both both the, yeah both the okay. kid the kid falls in front of them and yeah. they, they don't even know yeah they are texting know. each other yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's going to pick up the baby <laughs> yeah so this is right. a problem yeah So what I'm trying and to this say this is why our perception is upside yes, down. Yes, this is why. Especially mm. in the recent 40 years. Mm. So what I'm trying to say here even though the, yeah, 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 yeah well me. well I mean even though it makes sense, right? I, I I was kind of trying to not put forth my own answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, before your answer. Um, but it just it seems like of course this this uh, era for the believers um, you know, we talked a little bit about the qualities Uh, of okay. these brothers that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi spoke yes. about, right? Yes. And what honorable people they are, and what beautiful individuals they are. These people have been; they are a result of this ghayba, right? Yes. So this is the positive sides of the believers, or for the believers. It's a testing ground for them to be able to reach a certain kamal. Yes. Yes. The, exactly. And I want to exactly. say for the enemies of Allah, you know, sometimes we think that. Uh, that respite you know especially with palestine for example yeah, if you yeah, keep yeah. it very real yes, yes, yes. you know we see all these people dying and we think that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know uh, has just left these enemies of allah and these people free hand to do everything you know but the the reality is that that free hand that we that respite it only adds to the sins of these individuals True. and it takes them farther down Exactly. This path of destruction See, and that is why and the mm. maqsad and the goal of insan is to the reach to the highest levels of saadat mm. yeah prosperity and the enemies of insan mm. okay mm. like you just mentioned the enemies mm. of for example mm. the battle of today for example yeah the falsehood the shayateen of today yeah. they are 
going to the deepest levels down to shakawat. Yeah. So we have saadat, yeah. which is kamal. Right. A'la illihin. Mm. And we have shakawat, shakawat which is mm. asfal al mm. Yeah. So, now moving forward, I don't know how much time we have. Yeah, probably like maybe 10 minutes or so. Okay, so. For, for at least for this session, it was okay. quite heavy. Okay, Marshall, it was quite heavy. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> okay, inshallah. So, now, now before moving on to that, because you had just, you know, given a trailer of Saadat and Shakawat and Kamal, mm -hmm. I need to move forward to that. But mm -hmm. before moving forward, I need to make one more Muqaddamati point over, prerequisite sure. point over yeah, here. Yeah, this foundational point. Is yeah. that, see, since, our cons since we are not habitual of reading and studying the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt yeah. alayhim as salam yeah. as I mentioned we have 16,000 ahadith in Al-Kafi and we have more than like 100 volumes of Bihar yeah, and Anwar Allama Majlisi Rahmatullah Alayhi and Shaykh Kulaini Rahmatullah Alayhi that is why our concept of imamat is I would not say 10% mm. incomplete mm. or naqis mm. I would say yeah, much more 70 that. or more than 70% mm. incomplete. Mm. That mm. is why there are many misconceptions regarding the existence of Imam, the wujud of Imam, and the system of Imamat. Mm. Mm. Unfortunately, yeah. Now, I would like to quote one hadith from Amir al Mu'minin Ali al Salam, mm. and this hadith would act as a prerequisite to understand. Mm. The reality of the wujud of Imam, mm, mm. and then from the next session, inshallah, inshallah. if Allah gives mm. us more life, mm. we'll, we will move on to the philosophy of Gaibat, mm. which is related to this hadith. Now, Imam Ali, salam, it's such a long hadith, mm. and the hadith starts from uh, this story that you know, Hazrat Salman, salam, Salman a Farsi, mm. He was sitting at a place or inside his house. Abu Zar, rahmatullahi, he comes mm. to Hazrat Salman and he asks him, Oh Salman, I need to ask you one question over here. Can you tell me mm. what is the meaning of the Nuraniyat mm. and the lightness of mm. Amir al Mu'minin Ali mm. ibn Abi Talib? Abu Zar is asking Salman, Salman Farsi. Salman al Farsi said, See, you know, Imam mm. Ali al Salam is over here. Mm. Let's go and ask him. Okay, I don't want to answer. Mm. Let us, let both of us go yeah, and yeah, ask we him. Yeah, go ask Imam Ali al Salam. Okay, it's Islam. better. Okay. So, then over here. Talking about the luminosity and the, <laughs> yes. the Nuraniyat of Imam Over Ali here, when Salman and Abu Zar, Rahmatullah alayhima, they come at the service at the, in the house of Amir al Mu'minin, Imam Ali al Salam is the governor at that time. Mm. Mm. ثم قال عليه السلام يا سلمان ويا جندب mm. okay this is Imam Ali alayhi salam saying mm. ya Salman ya Jundab yani ya Abu Zar they both say labbaik ya Amir al-Mu'minin then Imam says innahu la yastakmilu ahadun al-Iman no person in mm. this world is such mm. that his Iman and faith will reach to its completeness without without mm. this hatta ya'rifani kunha ma'rifati bin nuraniya until and unless mm. they don't reach they don't recognize me mm. with which aspect of myself this with luminosity. the nurani mm. and luminosity aspect of mm. my wujud mm. this mm. learning and you know, mm. acting upon it is part of the faith and iman of a mm. mu'min. And what is, I mean, even though the statement itself is really powerful, but what I see, they didn't come and ask anything from Imam Ali alayhi salam. They didn't say and come, you know. No, I, you know, I then, skipped that part. Oh, did you skip that part? That, part. <laughs> that was an important okay. part because I was okay. like, you know, I skipped whoa. that part, you okay. okay, because of the limitation <laughs> of the time, okay. So they ask, yeah, we want okay. to learn about your okay, nuraniyat okay, yeah. and all that, all right, okay. okay. And this is where Imam replies. You can't cut traditions <laughs> like that, Jake. <laughs> okay. See, okay, this, this whole book, this, yeah, this is tradition, that one tradition yeah. this tradition is up around like five to ten pages. Yeah, mashallah. Okay. Mm. 
So, see, we want to talk about ghaibat, okay? Sure, yeah, yeah. We yeah. want to reach to that philosophy of ghaibat, and this hadith yeah. will be the muqaddama of that. Yeah. Now, so he says that nobody's faith is complete without this ma'rifah. Without the ma'rifah and, and the recognition, and recognition. Of, of the, you know, of the peak mm. level of my nuraniyat. Mm. Mm. Imam Ali salam is not talking about the nuraniyat of Allah. Mm. Yeah, Why? Sure, yeah. Because no one can reach to that nuraniyat of Allah mm. at its absolute level. It's only hmm. the Imam who can do that, okay? It's only sure. the Ahlul Bayt who can reach to that level of yeah. recognition of Ma'rifat of Allah hmm. Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Now, Imam Ali Salam, he says, فَإِذَا أَعْرَفَنِي بِهَذِهِ الْمَعْرِفَةِ If you recognize and gain that Ma'rifat of me hmm. with this Ma'rifat Nurani, فَقَدْ إِمْتَحَنَ اللَّهُ قَلْبَهُ لِلْإِيمَانِ This is where Allah hmm. will examine this Mu'min. Hmm. And their faith that's in their Islam. Mm. Mm. This person will be the Arif. Mm. He will mm. be the you know mystic over here. And his, his heart will be opened up with Islam. Yes, exactly. Mm. Now, this is dangerous now. Mm. If someone, you know, mm. he shows, you know, laziness and, you mm. know, Sure. Um, gaining this ma'rifat sure, yeah. فَهُوَ شَاكٌ وَمُرْتَابٌ mm. This person will shakun. always be in doubt mm. Mm. in his iman. Mm. And one of the alamats and the signs of Akhir mm. zaman is this is increase that people, the doubt of the mu'mineen mm. Related to Imam Zamana alayhi salam, related to the wilayat of Imam Ali alayhi salam, mm. this level of this ratio of doubtness will increase day by day yeah. because of the fitness occurring in Akhir Zaman. Yeah. Allahu Akbar. So this is a dangerous Imam alayhi salam. You learn, you gain my ma'rifat. Mm. Without my ma'rifat, your iman is not guaranteed. Mm. It's incomplete. And you had said that. That uh, approximately 70% uh, is what we don't know, is a misunderstanding that is why, of the Imams. That is why, this is my last point, inshallah. That mm. is why there's a hadith of mm. Akhirul Zaman, of Zuhur, mm. that when Imam Zaman salam, he appears, mm. in the morning he will, you know, mm. uh, cry out loud, he will say it loud, mm. that mm. I have appeared. Mm. I'm Imam, I'm the Mahdi. Mm. Okay? The hadith says, after six hours mm. at the time of Zuhr, there will be 11 more cries mm. in opposition to, in the, opposition to mm. Imam Zaman. No, 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 we are the rightful mm. version mm. of religion. That's Bring right. Iman to us. And the hadith says, when these 11, you know, Verses. cries occur, mm. many of mm. the Mu'mineen, mm. they will leave Imam Zamana and when they, they will enter the camp of these deviated mm. individuals. Mm. Why? Because mm. of the lack of Iman and Ma'rifat in the time of Gaibat, mm. which they could have learned, studied, acted mm. upon it, but they didn't because of the laziness. Mm. Mm. So inshallah, we will, inshallah. Uh, mm. Very if mm. Allah helps us, inshallah, we will talk about the philosophy of Gaibat. Mm. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, Sheikh Ani, thank you so much uh, for taking time out. A uh, very interesting subject. Uh, overall, uh, I believe we, we should have two or three, if not four sessions, today being the, uh, the first session, on how this is the era of opportunity and it is a golden Inshallah. era. This era of the Ghiba of uh, the 12th to one point to Imam, may Allah his reappearance. Um, a good uh, fundamental and foundations that we built. Inshallah. Um, and inshallah, we hope to have you on a, another talk show. Inshallah. 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 Thank and, you so um, much. Uh, thank you so much, dear viewers, for joining us on the talk show. Uh, we were talking about some uh, fundamentals and some prerequisites in order to understand how um, this era of the occultation of the 12th divinely appointed Imam alayhi salam is a, a golden era inshallah uh, that's all from us for now fi amanullah and assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah